Sarah Brady of Iron Fire. I'm here after the day after the 2023 UTMB with second place man Zach Miller. Zach, congratulations. Oh, thank you, Sarah. Um, so how's your last few hours been since you finished? Um, how are you feeling? You gotten any sleep? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've gotten some uh, fairly restless sleep, but yeah, a bit a bit of sleep and a bit a bit of food as well. So that that should start helping me down the recovery road. <laughs> Okay, I guess you're still trying to process everything that's happened as well. <laughs> um. uh, yeah, I think, yeah, my body's still just kind of like coming down off of all the caffeine yeah. <laughs> during the race and just okay. just sort of like getting back to a state of equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, so just to talk about the first half of the race, um, yeah, it was like pretty close. You were running with Jim, I think, for a good while. And then he moved ahead, I think, just be shortly before Kermayer, was it? Um, so how was how was that earlier part? Was it like quite intense running together, or were you just chatting for a time, or how did that work? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Jim and I have done this race so many times that th th this year actually played out very very similar in in the front half to last year. Um, very familiar, like Jim and I kind of sat back a little at the beginning. We caught up to everyone on the first climb, um, got in that lead pack. That lead pack broke down to me and Jim and Tom Evans, which was exactly the same as last year, except no Killian. Um, but it felt different to me. Mm -hmm. um, I the the run from Saint Gervais to Lake Contamine felt really good to me this year. I actually, I guess I I led the charge for most of that. Um, I didn't pull my poles out until the it's kind of rolling up. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the guys, I think, still put, pull their poles out. I didn't pull my poles out until, like, the last little steep climb on okay. that section. Um, I was just feeling really good. Um, and then, yeah, Jim, then it was me and Jim and Tom going into there and out of there. And, yeah, we just kind of grouped up. Um, I did not feel as good on the climb, the the first big climb over Notre, Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. But I think part of that is... Jim and Jim and Tom are probably both like six foot something yeah and I'm five foot six and I found both last year and this year it's it my my rhythm does not match mm -hmm. their rhythm when we're hiking okay um, if, if you're all running you can yeah. kind of run at a higher cadence or whatever mm -hmm. um, but when you're hiking it's that sort of like yeah. rhythmic long stride mm -hmm. and their stride is so long it's hard for me to match it and yeah. that seems to just kind of like mess with me and make it feel harder than it okay. should be. Yeah. Um, it's good that you know that and could just accept, okay, they're better at this bit, but I'll get them later on. Yeah. And it's kind of like, I sort of just have to find like, I'll like hike a few steps, then like run a few steps yeah. and then hike a few steps and then run a few steps. Or sometimes we'll fall into like a little trot and then I'm like mm -hmm. more like almost more comfortable just doing that. Yeah. Um, if we can get like the whole group just kind of trotting rather than hiking. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, but we stayed, the three of us very similar last year, stayed together all the way up called us in. And then it, it, you know, you were curious, you're like, is it going to be exactly the same? Like, is Jim going to make all the same moves mm -hmm. as last year? And we went down. It was very foggy as soon as we got to Italy. Like, you could barely see. Visibility was really low. And we went down uh, to the bottom of the pyramids, made the pyramids climb. Last year, I remember that feeling like feeling like Jim was making a move. Like, he yeah. climbed really strong up the pyramids, and the group sort of started to break up. Um, this year, we went up strong, but... it didn't really feel like Jim was making a move. Mm -hmm. We basically all stayed together. Um, and then, but when we went down, that was the next question. Cause last year him and Killian took off on the descent. Um, and Tom and I did not keep up. Um, this year was similar, but again, not quite the same. I could see glimpses of Jim's headlamp pretty much the whole way down. He was faster down the pyramids, but I could at least like keep his headlamp in sight most yeah. of the way. Um, he got to Lot Combal a little before me. Tom got to Lot Combal just after me. We all left Lot Combal probably like 30 to 60 seconds apart. Okay. Um, and yeah, then when we started climbing again, the last little climb, 
before descending to Cormier, that's where Tom fell back. Um, okay. I started climbing, was, wanted to, you know, see if I could catch up to Jim, mm -hmm. uh, and then Tom disappeared behind me. Okay. And then I actually didn't, I never caught Jim um, mm -hmm. on that climb. <clears throat> I think I may have caught a glimpse of his headlamp uh, at the aid station, the final aid station before we descend into Cormier. Um, but never actually caught up to him. Uh, okay. Got to Cormier and he was still there. Yeah. And then he left first and I left slightly after okay. him. You were well enough spaced out at that point though, like he had like, you know, a good few minutes and then you had quite a gap on third. So you were quite on your own there for a while was that kind of nice was it easier to just run at your own pace when there's no one right beside you yeah so some of the nicest parts of the race were actually where I ended up in alone yeah uh, so at first it was in this gap between Tom and Jim mm -hmm. and I just kind of like got to f I didn't have to worry about matching their stride and I just kind of found my own rhythm and that was actually really really nice um, the other thing I changed this year was I actually strategically took caffeine at Cormier, like okay. leaving Cormier. I always feel so bad in that stretch from Cormier to the base of Grand Col Okay. And it's a bummer because a lot of it's a balcony trail that's very runnable. Yeah. But it's like three o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. I just feel awful. Yeah. Um, that seemed to be one of your really good patches this yeah. year though. Yeah, every year that's probably one of like like not a particularly good patch yeah. for me and this year that was like a really strong bit right. um yeah and I, I think the caffeine and just sort of like being in a better mental headspace yeah. helped with that okay and I think you made a bit of a move then was it on the climb up Grand Col Ferret was that when you started to take the lead or close on Jim a little S sort of I mean I I didn't really like feel like I was ma making a big move I was feeling good going across the balcony, like going up out of Cormier, I was just kind of like, okay, find your rhythm, like, just like do this well. And then going across balcony trail, I was just kind of like, okay, find your rhythm again. And I found this really good rhythm and it was feeling really good. And then I just, I just ended up catching Jim. I mean, I was looking for him, but um, it wasn't like we need to break away. I just, I just caught him. I passed him like right before but Benati and and then slightly after Benati um, he like we were just going different paces mm -hmm. I don't know if he was holding back or if he wasn't feeling good I sensed maybe he wasn't feeling good yeah but I was mm -hmm. so I just kind of continued running the pace I was running mm -hmm. and and he didn't go with me um, and it was actually funny because um, my my headlamp has a, has a cord that goes down into my pack, and it was it was a little loose. So like, <laughs> people might think this is crazy, but like the entire night my headlamp cord just like kept smacking my pack. Oh god! <laughs> so, and it sounds like yeah. and it makes the sound like someone is someone right on you. your tail. Yeah. <laughs> and I could have stopped and fixed it, but I was like, you know what? It's kind of good because it keeps yeah. me honest. So like when I passed Jim for a while, I was like I was running and I wasn't looking behind. I was like, well, I don't know if he's still with me or not because like, yeah. there's that noise. But I think it might just be a cord. And then eventually, yeah. I looked by him. and I was like, yeah, he's not even there. It's just headlamp, Jim. <laughs> it's, just my, it's just headlamp, Jim. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so you were well out front then when I seen you coming into Champagne Lac. And um, how did that feel then to be leading the race? Was it like, was it a little scary or was it just good? Oh, I felt. I mean, I felt very good going into Champagne Lac. Like, mm -hmm. I was amazed how long. Like when I said I started feeling good. I was, I was thinking about that this morning. I was trying to think how long I felt good because sometimes you get a high for like 15 minutes and mm -hmm. then stuff. But I just felt really good for like a really long time and not like overexerting myself, just like this is very smooth and efficient uh, and a good pace, but I'm not like pushing, pushing. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I felt good going into Champagne Lock. Um, I was a bit concerned about the guys behind me because yeah. I had... Some I had um, the Jermaine was that they were like starting the climb and I yeah. was like oh that's like a little closer than I you know or yeah. I thought maybe they were a little farther behind um, but yeah I felt good going into there and I was really just like waiting to get to Champagne and then I was like the 
like basically the whole race of my mindset was just the race starts in Champe. Like we the race doesn't start until Champe. Like we're we're just getting there like smooth and comfortable and then that's where we start racing. Okay. Um, and it was a close race then even did you feel like you had to keep battling just to hold on for a second the whole way? Um, once Jim passed me, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It was a mix of trying not to give up and, and mm -hmm. I was still fighting to try to catch Jim one more time. Um, and then also <laughs> running yeah. scared because <laughs> Shimon just was, he was like 12 minutes behind me, like, like forever. Yeah. Like he was just <laughs> always right there, which is like close enough that you can't relax. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so I was very much like running scared from <laughs> him, but also trying to to catch Jim because it was okay. it was very tough when Jim caught me I was I was pretty bummed um, I mean it was like yeah you know we were kind of cheering each other on you know as we passed each other but it was also like we both wanted to win right of course. so yeah. I was bummed to lose the lead but I was like okay like there's a lot of racing left like we, there's even time to like regroup like eat well drink well and then like give it one like and mm -hmm. then like attack again and like you never know like you know, maybe he hits a low and I hit a high, or maybe yeah. I can just push super hard. Um, so yeah, I was trying to stay engaged and, yeah. and keep pushing. Okay. And then, so your time, like sub 20 hours is pretty special, but was that something you were paying any attention to trying to break 20 or were you just focusing on the guys in the race? Before the race, um, I went, I think I ran 21.37 last year. So before the race, I said, when people asked me, I said, I wanted to run under 21. And on a really good day, under 20, but on like a really good day. Um, and in the race, no, in the race, I wasn't paying too much attention to it. Uh, I did see that we got, we were getting to Cormier pretty quick, like similar to last year, I think. Um, but no, not really until like, probably like somewhere around Trient or so. Mm -hmm. I was like kind of looking, doing some math and being like, yeah, that sub-20 might be within reach. But then, like, we got to Valarcine, and I was, like, trying to, like, do the math, and I wasn't exactly sure how long it would take. The course was... The, the course was slightly modified this year. It wasn't the... Yeah. the per, it's kind of slightly mm -hmm. modified every other year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it was close to the normal course, but there were some changes. Okay. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure how long that... that slightly different finish would take yeah. um but it seemed like it was like within reach but it was going to be close and then when i got to Le Legere, even there i wasn't sure if i could do it i was like how long does it take to run into chamonix <laughs> i was <laughs> like how many miles is it and then uh when i was getting to town people were like you can do, like you can do it you can do sub 20 and i I, w I was looking at my watch a lot on the streets coming in, like yeah. s sprinting for the, sprinting to, you know, to bring it in hard, but then also sprinting to try to get under 20. <laughs> okay. Um, and I know you'd said about your last uh, big race where we interviewed you about the Trail World Champs and you wrote about it afterwards that you had kind of some regret that you kind of felt you didn't fully leave it all out there. You didn't have that drive. It sounds like you really corrected that this time. Do you, were you happy that you just left it all out there and had all the fight that you needed? Yeah, yeah, much happier. I mean, I, I put myself where I wanted to be, which was mm -hmm. in the lead group, and um, essentially covered moves and raced people. And 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 also, like, it would have been really easy to just give up on Jim. I, I know I didn't, like, I know his lead grew after he caught me, um, but mentally I did not, like, I was still trying to catch him. And leaving Valarcine, I was, like, I was running hard, hard and at the bottom of the climb I was running quite hard being just like okay maybe it's possible like I know he's like 10-15 minutes up but like maybe I can still do it um so like yeah. I didn't quit on myself um and I felt feel really feel really good about that um hats off to Jim he like he was so strong out there mm -hmm. um I mean he was just not he was not coming back um but uh yeah, he, he ran a brilliant race, and, and tactically a really brilliant race. Um, but yeah, I was much ha happier with how, how, I met, how I attacked the race as opposed to at Worlds.
Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's really nice to know you gave it your best anyway. Um, but then you did say pre-race and you've been coming here for a long time since 2015 when you ran CCC that you want to win this someday. So oh. now you've gotten close enough to almost taste it. So will you have to come back and try again? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I was just talking about this this morning. It's, um, I, I said to someone this morning, I, I feel like a big thing I was chasing was, even though I think uh, an American man winning the race is somewhat of an irrelevant statistic, uh, just because it's like there's plenty of countries who have never had a man or a woman or, or anyone win the race. It, 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 I don't know. In my mind is just... It, it's like a, it's kind of a neat statistic in a way, but it's also kind of irrelevant. Yeah. It's just a person winning a race. <laughs> um, but even so, I was still chasing it because it was like, it'd okay. be cool to have that yeah. on your resume. Um, and so I think that was partly the persistence in coming back because mm -hmm. I didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to do that because yeah. it was like, well, if I don't come and then someone else does it, yeah. then like, I, you know, I miss it kind of missed my chance. Yeah. Um, but now chasing the win is not as an urgent thing because okay. you can take a year off and then come another year and still chase the win because like that's just an individual accolade. You're not competing with other people for this like first ever spot. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I especially after being second, uh, it was like, oh man, it would really be nice to have that. UTMV yeah. champion title someday. Yeah. I don't know if I'll ever get it. So I am tempted to come back, but I'm not gonna make those decisions right now. I, I think there's at least a good chance that next year I may take a year off and do a different race other than UTMV yeah. and then maybe come back in a future year. Okay, um, I think you've shown that you can do it anyway. And um, this race will be here for a while longer as will you. So um, yeah, so thanks so much and hope you enjoy your recovery and a bit of downtime there. Oh, thank you very much.